it looks like there is a maybe, maybe, maybe potential that we could see some lockbox changes in STO, maybe. So um, the, the, the backstory is, or what we're seeing is that Cryptic announced an overhaul on Neverwinter's lockbox systems. Um, and so what he's saying here is it's likely or possible. A lot of things that we see from a mechanical standpoint, because they're on the same engines, we see moved over also to stow in some cases. Um, so what they've done is they've added a, a system that shows your chances of getting particular items. Now, never uh, winter, their tooltip looks a little bit different, I think, from ours. But we'll, we'll take a look at the example here in a moment. Uh, this would be excellent. Um, this would restore my, uh, I don't want to say faith, but I'm not one of those people that are against the gambling stuff, right? I understand some people have problems, you know, with gambling and things like that, but some people, all of us have problems with something, right? We all have, you know, have our issues. We're, we're human beings. And uh, I understand that some people have a hard time controlling themselves and I'm not, um, you know, diminishing that, but I don't think that that means that we can't have those kinds of things available to us because some people have problems. Uh, and, you know, you can make a million different, you know, examples of other things, you know, to illustrate the same thing. What I don't like, though, is, and the reason I don't open boxes is because if I were to go buy, you know, $50 worth of keys and open boxes and I don't get a ship, I feel like I threw $50 away, right? And yeah, I know you get the lobby and all those things, but let's face it, you know, unless you need that extra 10 lobby to buy something from the lobby store and you go buy, a, you know, three keys to get it. Other than that scenario, we, we all use the excuse like, you know, well, I, I really only open them for lobby and those kinds of things. We're all wishing we got a ship though, right? Um, and so the, the problem, you know, and the reason I stopped doing that is because I don't know what, you know, what is that that cost benefit analysis of me spending $50 or however much it is, you know, so if I spend $50, but my chances are one in 500, then to me that that 50, you know, only spending $50, you know, my chances of getting a ship are so low, I'm most likely throwing away my $50. And so even if those chances are, you know, really, really low for certain things, at least we know, right? So they might not change anything in terms of whether or not I buy, you know, keys to get ships if I go and look and see that it's so high. Um, but at, at least if they if they move to a system that's more transparent on that, to me that's my only. I don't want to say moral, but that's my only, you know, real problem. You know, ethical kind of standpoint. Most other games that I play have drop rates, pity points. Um, you know, so at a certain number, you you know are basically guaranteed to get a ship, like warships, for instance. Um, some of their boxes can be quite expensive, but it'll say right on there. If you buy 20, you will at least get one ship and you might get more. You might get one on the first one you open, you know, so I know right away, you know, if I really want one of these special ships out of here, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to spend X amount of money and I, that might happen. I might get what I want cheaper because it is you know, a gamble um, or I might get what I want and, uh, you know, at the, you know, let's say 20 of them, or maybe I'll just buy 20 to make sure. And I might end up with two different ships, right? So you can make that value proposition when you have those odds available to you. And the way that Stowe has that set up is that that's, that's not available. So that for me is really the, the, the problem is that, you know, and then you'll have people that do have a problem with gambling or maybe they're new and they don't understand. And so they think, okay, I, I really want this, this promo ship or whatever it is. And, you know, they spend a hundred dollars thinking, you know, at a hundred dollars, I'm definitely, you know, should be able to get it. And, and they don't, you know, I, I think most lock boxes, most of the testing I've seen, it takes about, you know, an average of about 200 in order to get a lock box ship. Um, so let's take a look at the, the blog here. And again, their tool tip looks a little bit different from, uh, from ours. So they're basically launching a new lockbox on their, uh, what, on the 16th. It's the uh, Dark Omen uh, is going to appear on that date. And uh, so in the first bit here, they described that we're going to see something different. Well, not were, but people that play Neverwinter. Uh, the first thing you will notice uh, that the odds are now displayed. And then it shows the example below here. So we can see the items that are available. And again, when you hover over a lockbox, I don't think it gives us a list of this, um, especially on infinity boxes because there's so um, there's so much stuff in it. Um, but I'm hoping we see some sort of a system in here, even if they just told us, you know, kind of the top items, you know, a ship or you know a tier five ship or whatever it may be. Um, but here they're showing us the drop rates of all the different items that are in the Neverwinter lockbox. 
Um, it seems like something small, but I, I really think that's a big deal um, to display this stuff. Um, wh what do you guys think? I mean, if they go and do this, would this make you more apt to buy keys and open boxes? Or, I mean, how do you feel about, you know, about this? I mean, I understand there's some people that just hate lock boxes, and I get it, you know. Um, but it, it unfortunately, it's, it's really kind of the standard in a lot of these, you know, free to play, you know, free access games that, you know, need to be able to monetize. Some ways it's better to wait for the MUDs bundles. Yeah, I agree with that as well, right? The fact that they've entered, you know, that they've added a lot of these things into the MUDs, because if I went and, you know, I wanted a ship, maybe it's not a brand new ship, right? It's one that's been out for a while. I buy, you know, a hundred dollars worth of keys and open boxes. And then, you know, a month later, it gets added to a, a MUDs bundle for 150. And I could have got two other ships with that. And they're all account unlocked. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling pretty bad, you know. And really what I'm seeing with all the different things, so all the different stores, MUDs, C-Store, Lockboxes, Events, um, uh, Phoenix, all of that kind of thing, I'm really starting to, to believe that there's just not enough stuff available, good stuff available in the game to be able to put into all those different places, right? Because it would be nice if you open boxes and there was a lot of other really good things you could get or costume pieces or whatever it may be. And so I'll hear that a lot, you know, well, if they just added more stuff and I'm thinking to myself, well, what more stuff, you know, if they started adding like ship consoles, you know, from ships from the sea store or something, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I, I just feel like there's, there's so many different, you know, means of, you know, getting prizes or buying things that there's really not enough stuff to go around in all of those to make all of them, you know, worthwhile. It'd be cool if they adjusted the odds to get something as okay, it takes the amount to open and maybe after so many guaranteed. Yeah, so they they refer to that as a, a pity point system or um, there's another name for it. From what I understand, that is something that is built in. From what I understand, I can't confirm that, but that's what I've read and, and heard from multiple people. Um, they they obviously don't tell us what the what the odds are to begin with or the odds of that. But from what I understand, after you open so many, your chances do go up. And I believe that's true with pretty much all the boxes you open, even the Phoenix Pack boxes. All things track them all for transparency in the game. Yeah, and really for me, that's the bottom line, right? I might not like what I see, but at least I know, right? I, I know what, what the truth is, what it is. And, and I can deal with that. You know, I might say, hey, I'm not going to buy the stuff, but I'm not mad. At least you're not operating in the dark. Because I think that's where people really start to feel like, man, you know, I got screwed doing all of this. And it's because their expectations of whether or not they could or couldn't win were based on nothing. You know, it's based on, you know, either what they've just heard randomly or just what they made up for themselves. Right. I mean, because there's nothing else to go off of. Most streamers are saying it's like 300 boxes before a chance goes up. Okay. Yeah, so if, if they give us odds for particular items, just their drop rates, and they give us some odds for, you know, that pity point system, you know, or add a hard cap. If you buy 100 boxes, you're guaranteed to get a ship or 200 boxes or whatever, because then I can look at a ship and say, is it worth $200 to me? And if not, is, you know, all of the, the low be worth that $200 and all the other gear, right? So I, I can make that value proposition to myself of whether or not that makes sense if I want to gamble and risk that amount of money. In my opinion, they should throw out the tier five infinity ships and in there increase the chances of the tier six. Yeah. If we look at a tier five ship and say, you know, we want to take those boxes out because they're just not worthwhile. I mean, I'd rather have one of those tier five boxes than, I don't know, mining claim. Well, not mining claims, but you know, XP boosts. I don't want an XP boost for my key. I opened, you know, or, or, uh, you know, Mark's boost, you know, pool. Um, so, I mean, if we start down that path, you know, and we say, okay, tier five should be just pulled out, then we're going to, you know, we're going to have to say that about a lot of the stuff that's in there. Because let's face it, there's a lot of stuff that's in there that doesn't make me real excited when I get it. Some of it, I delete it, you know. Um, kit module, you know, packs and things like that, or, you know, some of that stuff. It's just, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, there's a lot, there's so much potential and there's so much they could do with, you know, go through and revamp those, you know. But as we know, they don't have the manpower, the resources or any of that to do it, you know. So if they pull that stuff out, it's just less stuff in the box. So 
I don't know, man. Um, I, really, what we're saying is the bottom line is is that we want to see drop rates of ships, things we're after, be a little bit higher, right? But it would be it would be cool if they'd go through some of that. Look at okay, what are the easy things we could just do to make all this other stuff more valuable, um, so that you know when we do go through and I you know if I spend a hundred bucks on keys and don't get a ship, I still feel like I got I got my money's worth at, at least. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I still got my money's worth, right? Yeah, so um, I hope that this comes in in some shape or form to STO because it would be huge. I, I think it would really help restore some of some of the the confidence where there's been a lot of criticism. You know, because you look at like like Goss STO, like if you look at some of his videos, it's it sounds like you know it sounds toxic or mean or whatever, but it's really not. And I find myself like agreeing with a lot of what he says. And it's not that he's pooping on the game or even, you know, the, the, the people like Kale and Bordekiss, like they're working as hard as they can to keep this game going and making it as best as possible. He's talking about, you know, the 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 upper level, the, the, the company that owns the game that pushes it, you know, that they're they, they don't care about Star Trek or anything else. They care about, you know, having a product that people want to play you know, and making the most money they can. So it's as little as they can put into it and as much as they can get out of it. And, you know, and that's just the nature of it. Um, so I know sometimes, you know, if you watch his videos, they, uh, you know, some people come away like, oh, he hates the game. Why does he even play it? That's that's not what he's saying. You know, he loves the game and he wants it to be better. And uh, I look at his, you know, most of it is, you know, very good constructive criticism, you know. And I never, you know, come away from one of his videos thinking, you know, man, this game's a ripoff. I'm not going to play it because that's that's not the point. You know, the point is, is that there are things on the upper, upper levels that Kale and these guys have no control over that could be, you know, just a different decision being made that would be um, a lot more conducive to, you know, the way people feel and, you know, and, and you know, really just be better deals in, in general. So um, anyways, hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.